Children in the United States spend over 30 hours a week in an away-from-home school environment. For parents of children with food allergies, these hours away from the relatively safe and controlled home environment can be full of uncertainty. Parents feel anxious about their children's safety every day they send their children off to school. It requires the efforts of both parents and school personnel to keep the children safe. Safety has to be the number one thing. Um, I would always talk with parents and say the job of a parent is to balance safety with, res with uh, responsibility and uh, normality. They felt the only way they could keep him safe was to put him at a table that we called a peanut-free table. And in doing that, he was segregated from the other kids. As he got older, that became unacceptable for him. I think parents can have their children eat at school and it be a safe environment. The responsibility doesn't fall to the food industry alone nor does it fall to the parents alone. But there is still a great deal of work that needs to be done on a parent or a child's part because this is really a partnership. It's very frightening to think that your child could eat a small bit of food and it could take his life. So there's always a very um, strong layer of concern and anxiety when parents send their children off to school where somebody else is going to prepare the food. School food service directors today are challenged with the increasing number of children coming to school cafeterias with special nutritional needs, including food allergies. Add to that the USDA Child Nutrition and WIC Reauthorization Act and the Americans with Disabilities Act both now require accommodations to be made for children with those food allergies. One of the guide, guidelines through USDA, who is the overriding government entity over school meal programs, you are required in the guidance to provide reasonable accommodations for children that have medically declared health conditions including allergies. When I first started as director in the district, we probably dealt with very few allergies and over the course of time, they became more and more prevalent in our community. We started out, we had 19 elementary schools and we started out having school by school become a peanut free environment when it came to school lunch. As the number of children with food allergies become greater, school food service directors are required to be more proactive in order to accommodate children with food allergies. The process starts with establishing procedures, communicating with parents and other stakeholders, and then training food service employees. Um, that just led us into working with the parents, the children, the school administrators, the school um, health department, our health administrator, to come up with a plan. And then we had procedures in place where we still offered peanut products for our junior high and high school students, um, but were very careful about how those were, were offered. So prepackaged, um, avoiding cross-contamination in the kitchens. We would work with individual parents and their children for allergies. Um, and would have a plan in place. We started doing lots and lots of label reading for ingredients where we would f look at labels and find an ingredient where you wouldn't expect it to be in foods. So we had a file of ingredients and products so that when we were contacted by a parent regarding an allergy, we could go to those files. Most of our allergies were limited to, to very easy accommodations, so nuts, tree nuts, soy, some fruits and vegetables, but not to a great extent. On the other hand, I had counterparts in the state who were buying special items and going to the grocery store and, and getting special products from their vendors. For this to be truly successful, the school and the district administrator's support is essential for child nutrition program managers and directors to gather necessary information in order to provide allergen-free meals to their students. 
In my experience, it, administrators were supportive, so I worked very closely with the health services director um, to develop a plan over the course of time. We developed a form so we could keep better track of what child had what allergy and what the plan was. So was it a child that needed an EpiPen? Up to this point, the discussion has revolved around food prepared by the school itself. But what about preventing allergic reactions caused by food brought from home by other children? To address this, appropriate policies must be developed for the food service cafeteria. When we first started, it was, okay, this, this school will have a um, peanut-free lunch table and we'll assign somebody to make sure the, the table's peanut-free. At, at this school, we'll do this. And, and it just became, with so many kids in so many schools, the plan had to develop. And so over the course of time, we ended up with a document that, that helped address all those concerns for the child, the family, the school, the teachers. When preparing specialized foods for a child with food allergies, one of the ways is to limit the number of people in the kitchen preparing that dish. Typically what we had to do in our operations, again with multiple feeding sites and limited production sites, what oftentimes happened would be a specific employee would be assigned to make a child's food so that if it was an allergy, an allergen, or a texture modification, it would be assigned to a specific person who could follow whatever that meal was throughout the whole kitchen, prepare it, package it, label it, to help keep that chain of security, food safety issues. In summary, the number of children with food allergies continues to increase. School food service directors should not be intimidated by the increased requests for allergen-free meals. Instead, they're advised to have good communication, workable policies, and training for food service employees. So over the course of 25 years, we went from no special diets, no nutrient analysis, not worrying about who had what, to plans for nutrient analysis, plans for special diets, communicate the plan so that everybody knows who the child is, what the plan for the food for that child is, and again, being a customer service, customer focused business, and we are a business, regardless of what food service arena you're in, um, your business is to help and provide safe food for your customers. And we found it extremely doable.